The National Park Service has only recently entered its second century of existence, and campground design has intrinsically been a part of the National Park Service from the very beginning. Now, a century in, they're looking at reimagining what a campground looks like. We're gonna talk about what it means to you today. Hi, I'm Jason, and this is RV Miles. Here we talk about the latest in RV and camping news, a bit of our travels, gear reviews, and a whole lot more. Today, we're talking about national park campgrounds. You may not realize it, but what you think of as a modern campground has been developed through the National Park Service from the very beginning. When the national park idea began, people took trains to national parks. It was very rare that you'd take a cross-country trip in an automobile. They were new. But as automobiles became more and more popular, people began to camp with them. The earliest road trip campsites were just clearings out on the road. And then in national parks, they'd start to develop campgrounds that were basically a tadpole shape, a big circle with maybe a pit toilet in the middle, and people just camped kind of where they wanted. Campgrounds were messy, they were unorganized, and they were damaging the natural environment. So in the 30s, the National Park Service looked to solve that by creating a campground strategy. And what they did was come up with this compound leaf campground design, which basically what they did was create like sort of the stem of the leaf as the main road into the campground in little loops that were shaped like mini leaves going all the way around it that had parking spurs going in the direction of travel and small campsites right next to the parking spur. A parking spur is what we would commonly see today as a campsite. It's the spot where you park your vehicle. These campgrounds became incredibly popular as more and more people own vehicles. Thousands and thousands of campsites were built by the Civilian Conservation Corps during the Great Depression when the Park Service and other federal agencies put people back to work. But during World War II, national park visitation declined and many of these campgrounds went into disrepair. In the late 50s and early 60s, the Park Service sought to reimagine campgrounds again in part of an overall effort to encourage visitation and make the user experience better called Mission 66. Mission 66 set forth the 50th anniversary, 1966, of the National Park Service as a date where national parks would be reimagined for people across the country and introduced a new idea the Visitor Center. During the 50s and 60s, we got all sorts of new kinds of buildings that were mostly made out of concrete, but still intended to blend in with the environment, just like the buildings at campgrounds prior. The Mission 66 era was the last time that campground development was really thought about in a big way in the National Park Service. That changed this year. You may have heard that something called the Great American Outdoors Act has recently passed. It's supposed to provide billions of dollars to the National Park Service to recover some of its maintenance backlog. Many of those buildings that were built in the early 1900s and the 1960s are in disrepair and need to be rebuilt or remodeled. Coinciding with the Great American Outdoors Act, Early this year, in January, the National Park Service created a commission to develop what's called the Second Century Campground Strategy. This is a new plan that will guide the future construction of campgrounds, and it's recently been published. It's not finalized, but it is published on the National Park Service website in a community review phase. You can actually go in and comment on it. They want your comments on what the campground of the future in the National Park Service looks like. So let me tell you right now, it's a very dense document. I have read entirely through it. It talks a lot about turning radiuses. It talks a lot about road width. It talks about where the electrical pedestal should be placed in relation to the water spigot. All sorts of really detailed minutia. I can say that there is nothing really eyebrow raising in it. There's nothing that makes me think, oh, they're gonna bring a lot of concessionaires in to make these campgrounds feel a lot more like a Jellystone or a KOA. That's not the case and I think that's a great thing. And that's not a knock against Jellystone or KOA. I just feel like National Park Service campgrounds should be a way to visit the natural space peacefully. And it seems that the National Park Service agrees with that. They do mention that new campsites should all be 45 foot long at a minimum, that they should all have 50 amp power. And it's kind of like a way for a National Park superintendent to sort of go through and decide, does my National Park benefit from these things? Is my National Park hurt by these things. And I gotta say, some of the best ideas in this document include ways to make campgrounds more inclusive, more inclusive to people with disabilities, more inclusive to international visitors. Lots of great ideas that make National Park Service campgrounds spaces for everyone. Now, does this mean many new National Park campgrounds will be built? We all know that there's a severe shortage of National Park campgrounds. 
I don't think so. A lot of the money from the Great American Outdoors Act is already spoken for, and it's going to go to road maintenance. Maybe it's going to go to building some new bathhouses. Bathhouses, by the way, are the number one most repaired facility at national park sites. But in general, I think National Park Service campgrounds are already great places to camp. And it's going to be great to see a little bit of money being put into some of the ones that need a little bit of renovation. And the very few new ones we'll see, I think I they're going to look very similar to the campgrounds of the past. They're just going to be a little bit more big rig friendly, and they're going to be more friendly to people with disabilities. You know, the RV Industry Association has been pushing really hard for campground modernization in the National Park Service. And they really have been emphasizing privatization and how privatization can bring campgrounds into the future, meaning having a concessionaire run a campground. We've seen over and over at campgrounds that are run by concessionaires across the country that that is not an effective strategy. There will be more campgrounds that are run by concessionaires. They're going to be very similar to other campgrounds in the National Park Service. They're just going to cost more. But I'm very happy to see that in this campground strategy, the emphasis is about the campgrounds blending in with the natural environment. It's about that accessibility. It's not about Wi-Fi. It's not about recreation rooms. It's not about activities. It's about enjoying the natural experience, which I think is what most of us want when we visit a national park campground. National park campgrounds are great. Are some of them run down? Yeah, for sure but they're not terrible. A lot of people go through this planning phase when they're buying a new RV, trying to decide what the length of it is going to be. Do they want a 30 foot RV? Do they want a 35 foot RV? And one of the biggest things that they think about is can I fit into these National Park Service campgrounds? And a lot of dealers, I've heard dealers say, you don't wanna to go to those places, they're terrible anyway. They're trying to sell you a bigger RV is really what it comes down to. And there are a lot of National Park Service campgrounds that have shorter sites but a lot of them are fantastic places. And I think with a little bit of additional money, a little bit of renovation, they can be a lot better than they are now, and they can be great spaces for people to visit the outdoors for generations to come. Let me know what you think about National Park Service campgrounds and the future of... Flocks of geese over my head. That is just... This has been like the 10th flying V of giant... Canadian geese heading south for the winter. You know, in Canada, they call them American geese. Nobody really wants them. My first research paper in the third grade was on Canadian geese. Let me know what you think about the future of public campgrounds in the comments below. And make sure to click the subscribe button if you want more videos like this. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button as well. See you next time and keep logging those RV miles.